Welcome to Kari's Conscious Living. Hello, my friends. Do you love Heidi, Cherry, and Vea? And you would love if you got exclusive stories that weren't available anywhere else. If you join my patron, Cat Club, you will get three stories every month for $7 on the 7th of every month. If you want to join the club and it's okay with your guardians or your parents, then follow the link below and become a patron and join the Cat Club. Namaste, my little friends. Are you ready to meditate with Kari? Are you ready to stop running around, stop playing, jumping, hiding, whatever you were doing 10 minutes ago? Now it's time to lay down. To lay down and be still and quiet so that you can try and relax your body and not get in trouble with your parents. Sam was a pirate. He was a pirate that had been on many adventures. One of his favorite things to do was to make bath time more interesting. His bath turned into a ship. It was his ship, obviously. He was a pirate and he was the captain of the ship. He had a whole crew, all of his toys in the bathtub, he named them all and he did reenactments with them all and he would sail all over the seven seas on different adventures. He really had a great imagination and he loved his bath time. One of the other things that Sam had always wanted to do was go whale watching. And it just so happens that finally, after a very long time of wanting to do this, his school had organized a school trip to go whale watching on a big boat, like a real boat, not the bathtub, a real boat. And he was very excited. He wasn't sure if he could wear a pirate outfit, but he was going to dress as much like a pirate as he possibly could without looking obviously too much like a pirate in case everybody else in his class thought he was crazy. He wasn't going to wear a pirate like, you know, where they wear a patch over their eye and they only look like they have one eye and they hobble around with one leg. He wasn't going to go that far. But he had a vest that he liked to wear that looked a bit piratey. And he had some black jeans. He was going to wear them. He thought maybe it would be too much if he wore like black boots that looked too piratey. But in his own way, he knew he was going to dress like a pirate. When it came to the day that they were going to go whale watching, everything was perfect. The seas were good, so it didn't get cancelled. There wasn't too much wind. There wasn't any rain. The sun was shining bright. It was going to be a good day to see whales. Everything was going very, very well. Until about an hour into the whale watching trip, Sam started to feel very hot. Too hot. I mean, everyone else in his class had shorts on. Sam was wearing his black jeans. Not a good idea. And a vest. Not a good idea because he got a long sleeve t-shirt on underneath his vest. Very much not a good idea. He didn't know what to do. He started to feel really nauseous. The boat was rocking back and forth. Who'd heard of a pirate that had seasickness, he thought. This is ridiculous. He didn't really want to tell any of his friends because he was so embarrassed. But he started to look very, very grey, very pale, and a little bit green at points. Enough for his teacher to notice that Sam was not looking very well. She advised him that he should probably lay down. There was a part of the boat all the way to the back that was quite quiet because all the kids were at the front part of the boat trying to spot whales. The teacher announced that she was just over there if Sam needed her. Sam laid down. 
started to beat up on himself a little bit. I can't believe I'm seasick. What kind of pirate gets seasick, he thought. He closed his eyes. When he closed his eyes, everything was spinning inside. His tummy felt like it was swishing up and down just as much as the waves were doing outside of the boat. It was not a fun time. Eventually, he got to the point where he could close his eyes and make it so it started to feel just a little bit easier, a little bit better. Sam didn't realise how long he'd had his eyes closed when he heard what sounded like a squawking bird, really, really loud. He opened his eyes and the sun was really bright still and it was very hot and uncomfortable. But something was different. He sniffed really deep and things smelt different. Before he could smell the ocean, it smelt definitely like the ocean. And he could smell like, you know, the occasional shampoo or people's laundry detergent. This smelt different. He sat up really quick and he found himself on a raft. He wasn't on the boat anymore. He was on a raft, all by himself. He looked around frantically. I must be dreaming. I've got to be dreaming. The seasickness has made me delirious. Something is seriously wrong. He looked at his watch, and his watch had stopped. He thought maybe his watch had broke, or the battery had died, or something. Dawn, he said. He looked around again, frantically, and this time he noticed that he wasn't too far away from what looked like the shore of some kind of beach, like an island. The waves were pulling him closer and closer to the shore. He looked around again, frantically looking for all his classmates and the teacher. Even a whale would do, he thought. Nope, just the beach. A very empty looking beach with white sands and palm trees. It looked very tropical. It looked like he could have just landed in Costa Rica or something. But then maybe people would be there in Costa Rica. There was absolutely no one on this beach. No one sunbathing. Nothing that looked anything like a human had been there. I'm shipwrecked. I'm all alone. Oh, I don't feel very good, he thought. Again, Sam started to feel very nauseous. But this time, the nausea was coming from fear. He was panicking. I need to take deep breaths. Take deep breaths, Sam. Take deep breaths. Calm down. Think. 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 What do you do? What do you do? Then he had the idea. I use all my pirate skills, he thought to himself. I knew I was a pirate. I've been destined to be a pirate my whole life. This is when I get chance to be a pirate. Just as he was thinking that, his raft kicked up onto the beach. Sam jumped off. It was weird. He didn't have jeans on anymore. He had like threadbare shorts as if he was some kind of lost person that had been on an island for 10 million years all on his own. He looked down and his t-shirt that was white, it was definitely white this morning, was now grey and stained and it had holes in it. How long have I been on that raft, he thought to himself. This is absolutely nuts. He pulled his raft that had a long, twisted, knotted rope on one of the sides. He pulled it with that up onto the beach, put his hand up to his eyes as if to cover his eyes from the bright, glaring, hot sun, and started to take a closer look of what was around. What was weird was, even though the beach was very, very, very empty and very long, like palm tree after palm tree after palm tree, as you look down the beach... It just kind of faded into beach and nothingness. It wasn't a cove or anything. It was just a very long, 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 long beach. Completely empty. 
but there were certain things on the beach that caught his eye. Sparkly things. He decided to go towards one of the sparkly things. It wasn't too far away. But the other two things that he saw, maybe two things or three things, that were sparkling and glistening in the sun, were further, further down the beach. What are they, he thought to himself. Time to explore, Pirate Sam. He started to calm down and get more in the groove of being an adventurer. A pirate. This is my territory. Ha ha ha, he thought to himself. He started to run down the beach, which, by the way, was very hot. The sand was blaring, blaring, blaring hot, which made him run even faster. And then he had the smart idea of running closer to the water where the sand was cool. Smart pirate, he thought. Ha ha ha. This is not my first time at being a pirate. Eventually, he got right there close to the glistening thing on the beach. And as he approached it, it was gold. It was a golden sword. Wow, this is pretty cool, he thought. He reached down and picked the sword up. The handle part was made of wood, but the rest of the sword was gold. Gold! Gold, me matey! Gold! He said to himself and then laughed. I've struck gold already! Wow, I'm such a cool pirate! Sam didn't know what to do with the gold sword. Maybe he should try and find some vines or something to make a rope or a strap or something that he could keep the sword with him. It was quite heavy. What am I going to do with this, he thought. Maybe I'll need a sword. Maybe this island has some monsters or something on it that's not very nice. And then he was like, this is a gold sword. What treasure is up ahead? Let's go and see. He decided to go to the next glistening, shiny thing on the beach, which was quite a ways away. He was starting to feel a little bit thirsty. What am I going to do about this? I know from all the programs I've seen on TV that I'm not supposed to drink the ocean. I best try and find somewhere, like a waterfall or some pool of water that I can drink. That was in the back of his mind, because he is a very good pirate, remember? Been there and done this before, he thought. It took him quite a while to get to the next shiny object. But when he did, he was so glad that he had. The next shiny object was a silver bow with ten silver arrows. Whoa! Silver me, matey! Silver! I'll get some good coinage for this, he said to himself. Maybe I could buy a house with the silver bow and arrow. Or maybe I can lynch me some intruders on my island. I've decided this is my island. This island I think I'm going to call the Adventure Oasis. Again, he was just talking to himself because still he'd not seen a soul. No animals, nothing, no people, nothing. Hmm, what else am I going to do with myself? By now he was getting even more thirsty and he thought, But, 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 treasure, ahoy! There's treasure in my sights! He said to himself, I must go to the glistening, shiny things on the beach. By now he could tell that there was definitely two more things. Again, it took him quite some time to get to the next shiny object. But when he did, boy, he was happy. It was a brass-looking slingshot. A slingshot. I love slingshots, he thought. These are like the coolest thing ever. I've always wanted a slingshot, but my mum would never buy me one. She said I'd probably try and shoot it at animals or squirrels or birds or something, and that would be very, very bad, Sam. He could still see his mum's face in his mind when he thought about it. She looked very, very angry about something he'd not even done. He thought to himself, That's bazonkers. She's angry at me and I ain't even shot anything. Needless to say... His mum had convinced herself that Sam would not be good with a slingshot. Oh, how she's wrong, he said to himself in his pirate voice. 
Sam the pirate knows exactly what to do with a slingshot. He shoots stuff. He didn't know what he was going to shoot. <gasps> coconuts, he thought to himself. Islands always have coconuts. That's what I need. Coconut. Ooh, coconut water. Oh, that sounds so good, he thought to himself. By now, he decided he was going to leave the last shiny object. It was way too far away. He was starving and really thirsty. He turned around and looked behind him. The forest of palm trees looked very intriguing. Maybe there's a waterfall somewhere, he thought. Maybe there's definitely a palm tree with coconuts. Ripe, big, juicy, fresh, sweet coconuts. He'd always liked coconut water. Thank goodness, he thought. What if I didn't like coconut water? Nah, I've never heard a pirate that doesn't like coconuts, he said to himself. Sam headed towards the trees and started to walk in what felt like a jungle. But there was no animals. And then he heard it, the squawk that he heard originally that woke him up, like a bird squawking. A very specific squawk. It wasn't a blackbird squawk or a pigeon squawk. Where have I heard this? Oh, I know! It's a parrot, he thought to himself. I'd recognise a parrot squawk anywhere, since I'm a pirate. Pirates like parrots. Where is that thing? He started to look high in the trees. And then, really fast, from one tree to another, like there'd be a colour of blue and green and red, all like flying really fast. There it is, he thought. Aha! Aha! He was trying to make a parrot noise. I think that's what they sound like. Oh, I think that's as close as I can get, he thought to himself. Aha! Aha! It was working. The parrot, the green, yellow, blue and red parrot, started to fly closer towards him, bobbing into tree from tree, moving closer and closer and closer. Come here, matey! He said, you can be my parrot. The parrot swooped down and landed on the ground in front of him. I'm your parrot, the parrot said. You're my parrot, said Sam. Do you know where there's any water, said Sam. The parrot said, do you know where there's any water? No, I'm asking you a question, said Sam. The parrot said, no, I'm asking you a question. Oh. <gasps> said Sam. The parrot went, Ah! Oh, this is not going to be easy. This is not going to be easy! The parrot just kept parroting him, talking the same as he did, saying everything the same as he was. He decided maybe the parrot knows sign language. He pretended he was holding a glass and he brought it up to his mouth and went, Glug, 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 as if he was drinking a big glass of water. The parrot said, Follow me! Sam said. Why, I, my little parrot! I knew I was a good pirate, he thought to himself. Sam followed the parrot that was flying quite low down, quite slowly, so that Sam could keep up. Then he started to hear what sounded like water splashing and crushing onto rocks like a waterfall would sound. And as they moved forward, it was getting closer and closer and louder and louder. His mouth started to water. Oh, he, oh I'm so thirsty. Oh, oh, I could just swim in water. Oh, I could drink it while I swam. Oh, I could backstroke and just swim and drink and float and... He was thinking to himself... It was very good that his mouth was watering because the watering mouth was making him feel like he was getting a little bit of a drink. His lips had started to get dry. He was so thirsty. He was trying to think of sign language for food. If the parrot understood sign language for water, 
then he's bound to understand sign language for food, he thought. Let's get a drink first, and then I'll see if I can think of something. Maybe I'll pretend I'm eating a sandwich. That might work. It wasn't too long before the tree started to open up, and there was the most beautiful, breathtaking, cold, sparkly, looking waterfall he'd ever seen. Sam ran really fast and dived into the water. <gasps> His whole body kind of tingled and shook and he got goosebumps everywhere and as he came up he drank. <coughs> and he burst out of the water. Thanks, parrot, he said really loud. Oh, he'd also got sunburn. And the water felt so nice and cool and fresh on his skin. Oh, gosh, this is the best. Who would have thought I'd ever want to be in like a waterfall? I mean, I like my baths, but waterfalls? They might be giant sharks or something in here. And then he started to panic a little bit. But the water felt so good. He was like, no, there wouldn't be a shark in here. Maybe some little fish or something, but not sharks. How would a shark get off the beach? walk through the forest into a waterfall. Silly Sam, he said to himself. He started floating on his back. Ah, <sighs> this is the life. Then after a while, he got out of the water and sat on the side. He tried to talk to the parrot. Do you know why I found this bow and arrow, and this golden sword? And this slingshot? Why would I find these things, parrot? The parrot just said, Why would I find these things? <sighs> said Sam. Then he heard what sounded like a marching army. He started to get a little bit scared. He sat up really tall. What's that? The parrot said, Watch that! The army sounded like it was going doom, 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 like thousands and thousands of thousands of feet following each other. Doom, 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 doom. He started to get really scared. He picked up his three shiny objects, ready, ready to attack, ready to defend himself. He took a big deep breath and thought about channeling bravery, channeling being a warrior, being like this super, super, fantastic, awesome, brave pirate. And then he looked down on the ground. Ants, ants, hundreds and thousands marching in a line. Boom, 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 said one of the little tiny ants that was at the front. Halt! All the ants stopped, very, very still, standing to attention. So glad you're here, Pirate Sam, said the ant. You know me, said Sam. Of course we know you. We'd recognise you anywhere. You're the pirate with the three shiny objects, and we've read about you in books. We've heard of you for thousands and thousands of years. We've been passing it down through all the generations. One day there will be a pirate that will come and rule the island. And, 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 you'll be awesome. Sam said, wow, well that's, that's just great. Do you have any idea what I need to be doing with these three shiny objects? The little ant said, We don't know. That's up to you. Oh, right, 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 yes. And then Sam realised he needed to pretend like he knew what he was doing. That's right, yes, I'm, I'm the pirate. Um, okay, well, um, first of all, Pirate Sam is very hungry. Do you know where there's food? The ant said, Follow me. Jump, 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 jump. Jump, 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 jump. The ants started marching in the different direction. Sam picked up his three shiny objects, 
The parrot followed. Then he followed the ants. The thousands and thousands and thousands of ants, marching in a very unified way, by the way, perfectly, as if they'd been doing it thousands and thousands and thousands of years. Sam could smell mac and cheese. Mac and cheese, he thought. What's the odds that I'm going to get mac and cheese on this island? Mac and cheese? Why can I smell mac and cheese? And then he sniffed again. It could smell like pepperoni pizza. Pepperoni pizza? On the island? This is ridiculous. But it might not be. This might be just the best island in the entire universe. Adventure Oasis is like the bestest place on Earth. <laughs> he could smell chicken nuggets. Chicken nuggets? No way, he thought. And then all of a sudden, Sam opened his eyes and found himself on the whale boat. It was lunchtime. The kids were having pepperoni pizza. Some of them had brought chicken nuggets for the packed lunch. And yep, you heard it. You were right. Some of them had mac and cheese. Sam, for some reason, had completely dreamed up Adventure Oasis. Completely. He shook his head. Am I awake? Am I dreaming? Am I alive? Am I dead? He didn't feel sick anymore either. He felt great. He was starving. I'm starving, he said to his teacher. The teacher said, Come on, Sam, I have your lunchbox right here. Sam looked at all his friends. Did you see any whales? His friends said, Not yet, but we might do on his way back. You never guess where I've been, he said to one of his friends. Tommy said, where? Sam said, Oh, it's a long story. The end.